My big question is how illness and disease are created in particular bodies. So we often think about disease as if it's a matter of bad luck or bad genes, but the things that really kill us are created in particular social and economic circumstances. And that's what I focus on, but my particular focus is on the past. And how can we answer that question using human remains from the past? So that we don't just recreate a history that is everything was the same as it is today. And so what I'm currently working on is I'm working on a group of human remains from South Australia that were excavated in the 1970s. And they date from anywhere in the last 7,000 years. And the local Aboriginal community and I are working together to try and analyse what patterns of health and disease did these people actually experience. And what we're finding out, which we didn't expect to find, is actually we're learning lots and lots about children, about hunter-gatherer children's lives. And so those children, we've looked at defects on their teeth, which are formed when they're growing, so we know when they were sick as they grew up. We've looked at changes in the pattern of wear on the teeth. When did some foods get introduced and other foods removed? And we're looking at things like the patterns of activity. When did they start learning to make nets, etc.? And what we've actually found is that these children a lot of what they experience is very similar to some of the ethnographic reports of children, but there are some things that are different. So the children were clearly um, had, they actually had very few childhood illnesses, So, but they all had a difficult time around weaning when children start sticking things in their mouths have different foods, step diarrhoea, those sorts of things. But those sorts of childhood illnesses didn't create conditions of death, didn't kill kids. So so children survive those. But then when they get around actually between six to nine years of age, those children cease to be fed and provisioned by everybody in the community. They're expected to actually start People still feed them, but they're expected to start exploring the world themselves, start to learn new skills. And that's actually when that happens. And so what you get out of that whole group of children is that around nine, some kids are finding that transition hard and they go through another episode of illness at that time. But again, they survive. And so we've got this really clearly age-graded hunter-gatherer society. And the other lovely thing about that is if we look at their burial practices, up until the age of 13, none of those children are buried alone. If they die, their bodies are carried or left until the right sort of adult dies, and then they're buried with that adult. And so children have a very particular status in this society. And so understanding that actually tells us quite a lot about you know, ages of responsibility, how children were brought up, and ultimately how, what we hope is how those children become adults.